Hey, Tim Berglund here. Happy New Year. This is the final week of our holiday break, so I just want to give you a quick note, let you know what's going on. Uh, we're replaying some favorite episodes from 2023. If you didn't hear in any of my announcements in the last few weeks, we are not only continuing this podcast in 2024, this very weekly podcast, but we're adding a special short run series that's going to launch in just a couple months and it's going to be called Keyboard and Quill. It's a look at the evolution of data and technology and the systems that power our daily lives, kind of from a broader perspective. Like this is a thing that you're going to be able to share with non-technical friends, family, uh, anybody in your world who maybe wonders, what is this real-time stuff you do? And stop talking to me about databases and topics and things. Uh, this is the podcast for them. So I'm really excited about it. It's kind of going to be like, Radio Lab meets the History Channel. Um, it's called Keyboard and Quill. Link in the show notes to uh, a preview of that show. Check it out. For today, we're going to replay my interview with Anna McDonald, introducing us to Kafka Streams. Always wonderful to have Anna on the show. She also needs to be back just as soon as I can manage that. So listen in. Anna and I talk about Kafka Streams. Hello and welcome. I am your host, Tim Berglund, and I'm joined here today by my friend, Anna McDonald. Anna is a customer success technical architect at Comp. <laughs> Got it. Better known as the Duchess of Siesta. Anna, welcome to the Real Time Analytics Podcast. Thank you very much. I can't believe I'm allowed on another one of your podcasts. <laughs> I find that amazing and, uh, you know, I was invited. That's that's all I'm going to say. I, I didn't crash it. Literally texted you and asked you if you wanted to. I usually say when I have a returning guest that it is on your part the triumph of hope over experience. Uh, but I'm I'm glad to have you back. So. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to be back. back. This is awesome. It's a new podcast. Just I feel like you know back at the microphone yeah. in this the studio again. You know, good to have you here. Okay, so Anna, uh, if there's some who somewhat someone who somehow doesn't know you. Um, what does a Duchess of Siesta do and what's your, how'd you get there? A little quick background on you. Sure. So I was a, uh, principal software engineer. This is, uh, what I'm doing currently is my second job of all time, you know, clearly quite a mover and shaker. Mm -hmm. Um, and what I was doing, um, was, was basically event streaming at my old job and I fell in love with it and I fell in love with Kafka. Um, and I started to use Kafka streams. It was wonderful. And I loved using it for our use case, but I wanted to see them all. And so when I joined Confluent, I decided to go into the field. So as a siesta, we do, you know, technical, very, very deep technical things from everything from brokers to transactions to event streaming patterns. Uh, how do I do this? It's just really a real world connection to technology is the way that I would describe it. And it's never boring. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I, it, I hardly ever say that, but I can honestly say. You know, being a siesta is never boring. Uh, um, so I love it. Yeah. It's all kinds of different things, which I know for you is important. And uh, uh, other organizations, so you might know the role as TAM, technical account. Mm -hmm. manager out there. Yep. Yeah. So your, your uh, background, like you said, is principal software engineer, and you work with Confluence customers, helping them solve problems, do things, figure out new ways to use Confluence services, that, that kind of Absolutely. Thing. People build stuff. That's right. Yeah. So successfully, that is in the title. That's the problem with technical failure manager. is not an option. It's not a technical account manager. Failure might be an option for them, but a correct, but not us for success. Technical architect. Right? We're architecting success. You really are technically. Yeah. Right? Love it. Technically you're architecting success. Right. Technically. So you, um, and that's one of the fun things about talking to you is that, um, it is things aren't theoretical for you. You're, you're, mm -mm actually helping people solve problems. We're applied all day long. 100%. And um, one of the things that I know you've spent a lot of time focusing on and specializing on and you're, something you're passionate about is Kafka Streams. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So That's awesome. Yeah. And yes, I am. All of the above. I think, I think we're going to do a, a two-part Anna McDonald series here. Uh, for your beginning on the Real-Time Analytics Podcast. I think it's going to take two parts for us to really get through Kafka Streams, but I'd like to start today. Honestly, uh, you know, I want you to pretend 
that I and our listening audience don't know what Kafka Streams is. There's a mm -hmm. lot of technologies in the, the broad analytics, streaming analytics, real-time analytics ecosystem. Tell us about Kafka Streams. So it, it probably, be, you know, begins to start with, this is what I always love, right? So, so when I was doing this and how I found Kafka Streams was I like fought to get all of our data into Kafka. And once it was in Kafka, I was like, yes. And then I was like, oh, but now what do I, how do I, how do I transform it? Oh no, mm. what have I done? Right? Like, and then I was, and you would think that I would have researched the entire like AK ecosystem and known that Kafka streams exist, but you know, I'm kind of a, a JIT just in time sure, sure. person you, sometimes. You know how to write a consumer and a producer. So That's right. with my evil plans. I mean, successful plans. Um, and so what I knew was that getting, you know, especially like a new platform into an enterprise or anything that's like strategic, like, you know, th those companies that are, it's not, e it's not easy, right? There's a vetting process. And so I looked at, you know, a Flink, which is, you know, great for some things, a Spark, which is great for some things. And I then saw Kafka Streams and it was a jar file. And I was like, was this created just for me? Like, is that, who did this, right? And I was like, this is wonderful because as most companies, we already had, you know, an entire platform for deploying microservices. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is, this is, I can do eventing with a microservice. Yeah. Yeah. This you're, is great. you're already deploying microservices and it's just a library. Correct. And then out of the gate, I'm like, and wait, this is built specifically for Kafka. I can inherit all the goodness of failover, resiliency, sharding that Kafka already has. Mm -hmm. I was like, how could this be any better? Right. Um, and so I found it. I fell in love with it. Also, it's a very fluent, the DSL is a very fluent style, kind of not object oriented approach, which made me, you know, actually like something about Java. I was like, oh <laughs> my gosh, I cannot, I, I can, if you've seen my Twitter rants, I think it probably I, makes more sense. Actually, I've seen some Twitter <laughs> rants about Java syntax recently. This, this <laughs> episode is being recorded on April 14th, 2023. There's recently some discussion of two-dimensional array syntax in Java. And I didn't really see anybody come to Java's defense. So let's just give that one. Um, I didn't know you were not a fan of object-oriented things. I mean, that's Oh, I'm not oh, whatsoever. Okay. My brain doesn't work that way. Okay. I have a very functional brain. Yeah, and Kafka Streams is, if, if you've been looking at things in the last 10 or 15 years, you know, libraries that deal with collections and all of those have, even in not purely functional language. Correct. Right? have all developed very functional semantics. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what Kafka Streams feels like. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, so you know, out of the gate, right, the other great thing about Kafka uh, Streams is it comes out of the box with statefulness. So I always say in eventing, um, usually things tend to not get interesting. And by interesting, I equate that to valuable too, um, until you bring state. Mm -hmm. Right. Many times you're going to want to do enrichments. You're going to want to do right. Um, you know, references. You're going to want to keep a key value, and Kafka Streams provides that out of the box as well. Yeah. Sharded well, compute and aggregation. You know, that's correct. That's, that's a like rather state. Yeah, I want to do a group by. I want to do a lookup. Right. Um, you know, I need to keep state in my application. Uh, Kafka Streams allows you to do it in memory or durably out of the box. Right. It you know bundles RocksDB. Um, and also handles the sharding of said state. So it's all these kind of wonderful things strung together in a jar file as a microservice. So that's kind of at its core what it is. Got it. So let me summarize for the uninitiated. It's a Java library. We said Java implicitly. Mm -hmm. We have complaining about certain syntactical affectations in Java. Um, but I mean, Java is clearly extremely popular library or language for it is. a lot of you know, we'll say business software. Uh, so, okay, Java library, um, it's not separate infrastructure. You don't have like a Kafka streams cluster. You've got no your application and you, you mm -hmm. get stream processing functionality bolted onto it. I want to deep dive into uh, state in a minute, but I want to mm -hmm. back up and you said fluent. And if anybody doesn't know what we mean by fluent, that means basically uh, you've got, you kind of start with some object and I want to ask about what those are in a minute. And then you do something to it. Like say you have a stream and you want to filter it. Uh, mm -hmm. so you use stream dot filter. And then that filter method, you can say dot do the next thing, dot yes. do the next thing. So each of the methods yes. returns the type or a type that you can keep doing this stuff to. So you end up with this dot, 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 which is just super readable, 
right? It's a pleasure to read. Yeah. And it's some a of pleasure. these, like the functional things, some of these will be passing in lambdas and mm -hmm. maybe get into that. But that's fluent. And mm -hmm. I'm hundred percent with you that it's the right way to do an API like this. What are the core abstractions inside Kafka streams? Like, so what do I have to know? Suppose we know Kafka, like there's topics, there's messages. Mm -hmm. Now what? Um, what are those objects that you start a Kafka stream yeah. application with? So there's two real core objects, right, in our in our DSL that we want to talk about. And and those are a K table and a K stream. Right? Kafka streams, you know, one on one. A K stream is, as it might sound, stateless. It's a streaming representation of your data, right? Like a, the stream, a wrapper right? around a topic. You can think of it Correct. As, just as a topic. Exactly. So I'm going to create a case stream off a topic, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to ingest data from a topic, consume it, and then uh, stream it. And as you said, right, the night thing is, right? So I've got this stream. What do I do with it? Well, maybe I want to filter it. Maybe I want to branch it, mm -hmm. right? Maybe I want to take in that incoming state from a stream and I want to do a group by or a map or a reduce or and, 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 and all these wonderful things. Um, and then... When we look at this, as soon as you get into, okay, well, but I need to do some joints or I want to do some windows or I want, yeah. that's when the kind of statefulness comes in and that's a K table. A K table is Kafka Streams representation of a, of a key value store. Gotcha. So um, that, that makes sense. Yeah. That K table mm -hmm. is a, a stateful thing. It has some in-memory representation. The stream yeah. is, is really just kind of a feels like a lightweight wrapper around a topic. Right. Right. And and when we say it kind of like in memory too, like that's the other nice thing is that, you know, when you think about this, you're like, okay, well, in memory, oof, right? What if, what if, what if it gets worse? Yeah. Right. Right. right, right. So in rocks, in rocks, you can also, you go durably to disk. And rocks will keep, right, those files, those log files, segment files on disk. All of that is back durably to what we would call a change log topic in Kafka. So if somebody comes in and blows away your, your state store that's sitting there on disk, it can be rebuilt from a change log topic in Kafka. So it's durable. Got it. So let me rebuild that scenario for a second. So I've got a K stream. Mm -hmm. That's a topic. And um, I do something that that basically turns it into a table. Like maybe I'll do a filter or map, blah, 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 trend, you know. Mm -hmm. But then I group by some field. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, that. The output of that, just stop and think for a second. I've got these messages coming in and I want to group by postal code. Well, postal mm -hmm. code is now the the key in what's effectively a, a hash table, right? Uh, and that's, that's what you've done. You've grouped these messages by something. And so now all of a sudden, that's this K table thing you're talking about. That's a key value store. Right. Yeah. yeah, and you, you want you can materialize that into a state store, right? And then you should, you know, like like you can name it, you can do different types of stores, but that's exactly right. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. about, well, how do I want to represent this data? What do I want it to look like? And obviously you have to kind of keep that somewhere as you come in and you're grouping by or as you're aggregating, right? Right. Now, a question I've gotten in the past, which is, I think this is a junior mm -hmm. programmer question. Um, and all senior developers start as junior developers. So that's a respectable place to be. But uh, why would I use this API? Why wouldn't I just write this stuff myself? And <laughs> what Admiral Ackbar, my friend want, Admiral Ackbar has to say about that. <laughs> right. It's a trap. It's a trap. Um, right. Players. And and I tell you what, anytime I go in to a customer and they go, well, uh, we're using um, like uh, sticky partitioning and static partitioning. And I look at them and I go, and is that because you need the same instance to pick on the same partition every time because you're trying to manage state, like mm -hmm. sharding state yourself? And they're like, mm -hmm. well, yes. And I'm like, yeah, no, Kafka Streams yeah. does that for you. Exactly. So <laughs> you you started with like filtering or splitting or something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are, those are state, those sound stateless. And so you could imagine right. just writing a consumer consumes a message. Well, it, does it have this or this? Okay, produce, produce. Yeah, you know, yeah, fine. I could write that. But once I do that group by, and again, I can make a hash map. I, I can sure. I type the Java code, uh, but that that doesn't scale. That has to be on heap, and it's not persistent. And so all of a sudden, there's a massive amount of functionality you realize in this thing. You said RocksDB. And how do you transfer it? Like, what if it dies? What if that instance dies? Do you have a standby? Oh, heap. It's oh gone. no. Yeah. Oh, I just mm -hmm. I remember one one person uh, 
who was, was not a particularly junior person said, well, why wouldn't just put that in a in-memory data grid? I'm like, well, that is what you would say if you happen to have an in-memory data grid lying around. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. So yeah, you've got this yeah. RocksDB. If you don't know what RocksDB is, uh, we'll put a link in the show notes. It's interesting. It's a open source key value store, the log structure merge tree internal. It's cool, right? And that's by default, that's how Kafka Stream stores that stuff. And you said that key value store, I forget what you called it, but it gets persisted to a, uh, basically that stuff is replicated inside Kafka too. Yes, absolutely. So, absolutely. Absolutely. You inherit all I, the durability. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, okay. And we started, let's, let's get back to stakes. Yeah. I said, I wanted to back up and talk about mm -hmm. K streams. Uh, and I know it's just kind of summarizing that, but state's a big deal. And you mentioned sharding and failover and things like that. So, once you're doing something stateful in a stream processor, if you're writing that code yourself, again, Admiral Akbar tried to warn you. Um, yeah. Talk about how that works in Kafka. I'm interested in that. So, right, yeah. the, the thing in Kafka streams is there's there are two main types of tasks. There's an active task, and then we have something else called a standby task. Hmm. The job of those tasks, when we have state, right, is to look at that and go, okay. When I'm doing change logs or I'm, I'm reading from this topic, I'm, I'm responsible for the connection between state, right, or processing or whatever it is, and this entire, what we call a topology. And that's probably important to digress a minute. So yes. in Kafka Streams, yes, we have a source, we have a processor, and we have a sync. Those things yeah. together make up a flow. So in Kafka Streams, we have, you know, what we call that a, a topology overall is your big one. And that's made up of, of many sub-topologies. And those sub-topologies involve a source, processing, and a sync. Okay. And so when you look at these, the way that Kafka Streams works is it says, hey, because in Kafka, right, the only order guarantee is by partition, we can safely assume that processing along these partitions is safe. So if I'm doing everything on you know, partition zero as I go and everything is co-partitioned, right, and the mm -hmm. keys are the same. And you can, you know, fix. If they're not, you can kind of repartition in Kafka Streams and fix it. I've got two topics um, that a topology is. Right. Except sources. Right. Yeah. You can come in. You can, you know, rekey them so they have the same key and the same number of partitions and go. All of that is safe. What that means is, and the reason why we're so careful to do that is, I can safely take that task working on those code and pop it to another instance. I can assign it to another instance if this one goes down. So these are, you know, right, these are kind of self-sustaining, isolated little streams of data that are able to be migrated in the case of a failure. And that's how sharding works too. So when we look at this and we look at the way that the shards work, they're all safe because at any time they're this encapsulated thing, self-sustaining, that kind of was like, hey, I can pick this up and put it here, pick it up and put it there, pick it up and put it anywhere, right, when we talk about that migration. And that's kind of just to tie a little bow around it is why we have state, you know, active tasks and standby tasks. Because for those large stateful applications, as you might imagine, um, let's say that your application dies and Kafka Streams is not 100% sure if what's sitting on disk, let's say it's, your data is so big, you're, you know, you've got that local state on disk. And Kafka Streams is not sure if that local state is good or not. So safety first, it will replay the change log. Now, that could be a lot of data. Right. And mm -hmm. so that standby task is sitting over there in another instance, quietly yep. reading in the same data that the active one was building up state, building up state. And so if I die, Kafka streams will go, oh, hey, standby task, you're active now. And that minimizes your downtime. It's beautiful. It automatically and reassigns that the state's you've, already been you've building consumed up. up to an offset that that is. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. It'll catch it up and then goes, whoop flips it on. And, and that has been a really kind of just a wonderful safety feature that's built in for a lot of these things that are mission critical, which is why, you know, Kafka streams to me as somebody who does event streaming um, more so than like, you know, data pipelines, uh, both which have analytics right in it, uh, which is why we're still talking. I mean, we're friends too, but I mean about work. We would be talking um, anyway, but why we'd be we're talking contact. anyway. Yeah. Right. Um, th those are critical, you know, Missed downtime can mean like in, a, in an instance of, let's say, quality control, right? Yeah. You don't want your quality control for a given production line and a given type of thing to be offline for no, any no. amount of time. And, and for, for, oh, no, I have to reconsume 
a substantial portion of a topic topic and build up that state before I can start consuming again. Um, mm -hmm. That's going to cause, you know, potentially destructive latency. I, and I'm, I'm thinking here as we're talking, we're saying a lot of Kafka stuff and we I will link in the show notes to uh, some introductory materials. If, if the stuff about offsets and consuming and as bad mm -hmm. as ask a question about consumer groups and I'll, I'll link in the show notes. If, if you're new to Kafka, Kafka is a, a really a key thing that you have to have some familiarity with in this real time analytics world. So let us just use the Kafka terms. We'll send you some links to stuff if, if mm -hmm. uh, you need the explanation. So on that yeah. point, um, just to reassure everyone, go check there. Um, standby task and active task. Um, are those, are, are we, those are ideally on different servers? Is there any sort of awareness of that kind of thing in the way this is balanced? Yes. So we did, yeah. we did, we just have rack awareness now in Kafka streams. I say just, nice. but it was in a little bit more recently. Right. And so yeah. there's a lot of features and functionality that you can do there too. Absolutely. Um, nice. you know, to make sure that, that we're trying to be smart in the way that we the assign active those standby, standby tests. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yep, yep. To, to Kafka, do those look like different instances of the same consumer group or? Right. Uh, yeah, yes. Because they're because consuming like, the same partition. It, right? yeah. 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 Well, so it's almost like, you know, fetch from follower, the way that fetch from follower works where you can, you know, kind of pin a consumer to whatever rack it yes. is. for local yes. good. So it's kind of like that. So yeah, the, 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 it's, it's all about, and this is what I love is, is Kafka streams in most 90, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's awesome. Right. We inherit all the goodness from consumer group coordinators and consumer yep. groups. Mm -hmm. And so just as you can do things to make sure that if available, right, a consumer can consume from the closest rack. You can do right. the same type of thing in Kafka streams with a little bit of extra goodness, which is also to say, hey, and also, right, make sure I've got a good representation across the way for, for rack awareness for my standbys. Got it. Got it. In a way that is similar to fetch from follower. It's not, doesn't directly mm -hmm. rely on it. Right? So now, okay. Okay. No. Yeah. Fetch from follower. Uh, that's another thing. We'll try and th throw a link to that. I think that was like a late mid to late 2021 Kafka yes. feature, if I recall correctly. Um, and it's actually interesting and you kind of have to know a little bit about how replication works, but it was like a nice extra thing that might make some consumes go faster, uh, or lower yeah. latency, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, and that's the thing about Kafka streams is it really is built. It's, it's made out of Kafka. And so correct at a top level, you know, imagine if you just wanted to teach a Java programmer how to Kafka streams without them knowing really anything about Kafka, you could get a start. You could say, okay, here's this abstraction. That's a stream. It has things that happen and they're They've got a key and a value and you get them and there's this functional fluent API, right? And here's a thing called a K table and here's how they work. And um, Yeah, and I would say that but, yeah, Kafka Streams does a pretty, you know, it does, it does now again, right? Like the ideal world, like there's nowhere in Kafka. And I think this is something, you know, there's uh, for example, my friend Igor is doing, you know, uh, has has started talking about this. And I think a lot of people are talking about like topics as a service. Because no matter where you are in Kafka today, people still think about partitions, right? Yeah. And yeah. that is kind of a blocker. But in Kafka Streams, for example, if all you know is you have a topic and you have the name of a topic, mm -hmm. right? And you want to consume from that topic and then maybe do a group by, you don't need right. to know anything else, right? You can do that and then you can output it, you know, to another topic if you want, right? Or, you know, whatever, whatever else you may want to do. A uh, key point you just made there, the output, and you said this before, really, but I, mm -hmm. I, I want to make sure everybody got it. Uh, a topology is a source, a processor, and a sync. That sync mm -hmm. is a topic, right? So the, yes. the you, so you read messages, you, you do com computation on them, and you put them back in a topic. Correct. That is the ideal form for Kafka streams, right? We try to avoid side effects. Now, that's not to say that people do not do it all the time and, and, and say, I'm going to call a REST API in the middle of this. A synchronous and service for, in the middle of my asynchronous stream processing API. I, right, right. And not to also say that I haven't seen it work well, because <laughs> sure. I have, but because of the edge cases, right? And I, and I, you know, this is something actually that we've been talking about is, you know, is that 
valuable functionality that we really want to clean up and all those rough edges and side cases and provide something like that out of the box. It's something actually we're kind of actively talking about now. But if you want to be, you know, super safe, right? And also, I'll be honest with you, putting stuff back in Kafka to me, that's distribution because anybody can read it. Mm -hmm. So if Kafka is your central nervous system, you shouldn't be like, oh no, I got to put it back in Kafka. You should be like, you know, Kool-Aid man style. Oh yeah. I'm putting it back in Kafka, you know, like break through the wall and everything. And I'm right. like, you know, awesome stuff. Um, so that really is a very valuable pattern, right? We just want to see, you know, what's the demand? What, what use cases does this open? How is it going to help people? If we can kind of look at also saying, you know what, it's okay to do that. It's okay for you to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, and make it, make it a little bit more safe. I want to drill down some more into that. I want to talk about uh, how you get at the things in a K table. And I want to talk about time and uh, what, how, how we deal with time in, in stream processing. Those are good things to drill, to drill down into. Oh That's yeah. Be part two. So I love this. My guest today has been Anna McDonald. Anna, thanks for being a part today of the Real Time Worlds podcast. This is like a teaser for next episode. And there you have it. If you feel compelled to help us spread the word and grow the real-time analytics community, you can give us a rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever fine podcasts are sold. If you're watching us on YouTube, hey, subscribe and of course, hit that notification bell. And you can always share your favorite episodes on LinkedIn or Twitter or wherever it is you do social media. Thanks, and I look forward to talking to you in the next episode.